Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. We're going to talk about four different types of E. coli here now, uh, and these are your EIEC, or intro-invasive E. coli, the ETEC, which is intro-toxogenic E. coli, the EPEC, intro-pathogenic E. coli, and EHEC, intro-hemorrhagic E. coli. So let's look at these four different strains of E. coli and see how they present differently based on their toxins. So intero-invasive E. coli, or EIEC, this is going to be where the microbe invades the intestinal mucosa, causing necrosis and inflammation. So think of EI, the I in EIEC, meaning it's invasive. It's invading that intestinal mucosa, causing dysentery, and we often see the same type of symptoms that we talked about previously with Shigella. If you need to re review that, you can pause this video, go back to a previous lecture that we have done here, and look at the Shigella clinical manifestations. Introtoxogenic E. coli, or ETEC, this produces a heat label toxin uh, that is heat stable, and it's an introtoxin. So introtoxin, introtoxogenic, the T is important here. No inflammation or invasion is associated with it, but ETEC causes traveler's diarrhea. The traveler's diarrhea is a watery diarrhea. That's typically all you see with introtoxogenic E. coli. Intropathogenic, or EPEC, E. coli, uh, has no toxin produced to it. It basically will just adhere to surfaces. It will flatten the villi and prevent absorption. So if we're preventing absorption in the gut, what are we going to see? Well, we're going to see diarrhea. Most of the time this is in children. Uh, so with EPEC, the P, you can think pediatrics of diarrhea in children. Then finally, enterohemorrhagic E. coli. Uh, this is the one that you most often see uh, discussed and thought about when you talk about E. coli and uh, GI infections. Uh, O157H7 is the most common serotype of enterohemorrhagic E. coli, uh, coming from most commonly undercooked meats and then raw vegetables. Uh, Shiga-like toxin here uh, can actually create hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS. Uh, do you, if you remember, hemolytic uremic syndrome has a triad to it. The triad is anemia, thrombocytopenia, and an acute kidney injury, or AKI. All that's going to be due to the microthrombi that forms around that damaged endothelium, giving us mechanical hemolysis, platelet consumption, and then that decreased renal blood flow. So what do we see with EHEC? Well, this is causing dysentery. Uh, the toxin alone causes necrosis and inflammation to give us dysentery. It doesn't ferment sorbitol, uh, where all the other E. coli do ferment sorbitol. So now, we discussed we have EHEC, so the H, we remember for hemorrhagic, hamburgers because it's passed on an undercooked meat, and then hemolytic uremic syndrome that has that triad of anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute kidney injury. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.